But we are here today to celebrate a big, uh, a momentous occasion for the city of New Bedford and for Greater New Bedford in general, and that is uh, we're here to welcome the first vessel to call upon the New Bedford Marine Commerce Terminal, the MV Thorco Svenborg. I got that right. This is the first one. You guys got to see uh, history in the making today. Um, the, uh, the terminal has been a work in progress for uh, a number of years now, and some two and a half years ago, uh, this thing was, this area over here over my right shoulder was still a field, still a contaminated site, uh, and there was ample doubt whether the proposed project would get off the ground. There were uh, calls from many quarters to cancel the project, to not bother spending the money, to not invest in the Port of New Bedford. Uh, but through the hard work of city and state and federal officials uh, and some political courage from every one of those quarters, uh, this thing is now receiving ships. Uh, and that is a big thing for the port. It's a big thing for this city. And we're so very proud that we're able to, uh, to witness it all today. This is a, um, and, and what's being unloaded here, by the way, I will go into this in a little more detail in a second, uh, is something that is uh, part of another New Bedford Green initiative, uh, which is the, uh, the Future Generation Wind Project in Plymouth, of which New Bedford is one of the primary off-takers of electricity. Again, this is another big step in New Bedford's effort to become, uh, and uh, we already are, uh, one of the greenest cities in the United States. This, at the end of the day, this is a story of the reemergence of the Port of New Bedford as a nationally important port. Uh, the growing leadership of New Bedford in America's green economy and, the econo and a marker of the economic development efforts of our city that are all about capitalizing on our assets and thinking long term. Let me tell you a little bit about the port and the terminal. So the terminal is 28 acres. It costs uh, approximately $113 million. It is uh, the first purpose-built offshore wind uh, terminal, marine terminal, in North America. Some 4,000 pounds, roughly 4,000 pounds per square foot capacity makes it, makes it uh, one of the sturdiest, if not the sturdiest, uh, marine terminal anywhere in, in the world. Uh, and that's because it's designed that way to support, uh, in the long run, uh, the offshore wind industry, whose components are so large that they cannot be and heavy that they cannot be readily supported on an ordinary terminal. This is really New Bedford's positioning itself for that future. As it stands now, New Bedford is the preeminent, and we all know this, the preeminent commercial fishing port in the United States. Some 9% of the country's fish landings come right into our port. Uh, we are a rapidly growing cargo port as well. Uh, David Wexler from Maritime International, who's uh, uh, here today and will be speaking in a moment, will tell you about the growth of cargo in the harbor. We've doubled tonnage in the last year, which has meant tremendous job opportunities for the International Longmans, Longshoremen's Association, many of whose members are here today. It's about putting people to work. And now, with this terminal on board, we're going to be able to accelerate the growth in cargo generally. Uh, and to position ourselves to become the epicenter of the offshore wind industry in the United States. There are right now some 74 offshore wind farms, utility scale offshore wind farms in Northern Europe. It is only a matter of time before that industry makes its way across the Atlantic and sets up shop in the United States. And when it does, it'll set up right here. 25% of the nation's wind reserves lie just south of Martha's Vineyard in the waters where federal leases have already been issued. This is the closest industrial port. This port is ready to make things happen in that industry. So whether it's two years or four years or five years or something along those lines, we're going to be ready. We're going to be way out in front. And now's the time, not the time to take our foot off the pedal in that industry with respect to that industry. And so we have here now uh, the first ship that will come in and we're setting ourselves planning for many more to come in the, in the long run. And again, I emphasize the long run. This project, this, this terminal was not built for a single project. It was built for the next 100 years to be a key part of this port's infrastructure. We'll be paying dividends over that long period of time. So we're very, we're very happy about what's happening here. And we see big dividends, uh, dividends paying off for this port 
uh, in the long run, long after we're all gone. Maybe not you. You'll probably still be around for that, I think. But the rest of us adults here uh, won't be able to see uh, see it uh, in 100 years from now. So make sure you come back for the 100th anniversary. The, the other thing I want to really uh, emphasize here is, um, you know, we say this from time to time, but in some, and sometimes it's met with um, incredulity, but new Bedford really is, really has emerged in the last couple of years as a true national leader in renewable energy. Um, the Wall Street Journal reported a year ago that New Bedford derives more solar electricity than any city per capita in the United States, except Honolulu, which, as we know, as you've heard me say, gets many more days like this than we do. So it's not a level playing field. So we're doing very well. Um, but this project, what will be offloaded here today, by uh, our local longshoremen is another one of our green projects in Plymouth. And it was New Bedford's participation that made that project get off the ground that will be generating electricity, that will be saving the city of New Bedford some $200,000 next year and some $7 million more total over the next 20 years. Um, we're very proud of this legacy. We're proud also of all the things that we're doing to make ourselves more energy efficient, including the replacement of all the street lights in the city, some 10,000 of them, of retrofitting uh, city buildings all over the place, of having the largest fleet of electric cars in uh, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, and so on and so forth. And our energy director, Scott Durkee, who's here today, is dreaming up more stuff that we can do to get out ahead of it. Yes, let's hear it for Scott. So, the re so what this is all about is um, creating uh, economic activity and therefore jobs by focusing on what we really do well, and that's this port. The port is why New Bedford exists in the first place. It's why whalers from Nantucket moved here, because this was a more advantageous place to do business, and it is the reason now that New Bedford is reaching into the green energy future in order to grow more jobs still, so that we can set ourselves up for the long run. In public life and uh, among elected officials, and the elected officials who are here today will, will echo this, um, it is very easy to go from election cycle to election cycle and not look toward the horizon to set up your community and the people uh, in it well for the long run so their children and grandchildren can succeed. And that's what we're doing here today. That's what it's ultimately about. It's about putting this city in a position to do well to prosper in the long run. And there are many people to thank uh, along the way. I want to start off by thanking the folks at the Mass Clean Energy Center for uh, working very closely with the city uh, all along the way over the last couple of years. It's been, it's been quite an effort. Uh, in particular, I wanted to note the efforts of Alicia Barton, the director of the Mass Clean Energy Center, as well as Bill White, the head of uh, Offshore Wind for uh, the Mass CC. Um, they, uh, they've stuck with this through thick and thin, through a change in administrations and a lot of other bumps along the way, and they've, they deserve tremendous credit. I want to thank uh, Con Edison Solutions, uh, which is the, uh, the developer on the Plymouth project that I just mentioned, the Future Generation Wind Project. Uh, I don't know if they're here today. I know they sent the quote along for the press release. Uh, they've done a number of other projects with the city, and they've been really good partners. Uh, I want to thank our legislative delegation, and you'll hear from uh, from those in attendance today, but I want to thank, first of all, Tony Cabral, uh, whose district uh, this terminal uh, sits in. Uh, Tony has been a uh, stalwart for this project right from the start, making sure that the funding uh, has been there, fighting for it all along the way. He'll, in a moment, he'll tell you about that in detail, but it's, again, this is a good example of how the state and uh, the, the state, federal, and, and local officials have worked together all along the way. Uh, Paul Schmidt, who is the chairman of the Joint Environmental Energy and Environmental Committee, who's here uh, today as well. It's a, a committee that oversees the Mass Clean Energy Center, and Paul, as we all know, represents part of New Bedford um, from his farm in Westport. No, I'm just giving him a hard time. It's an honor. Uh, yeah, yeah, yes, honor. yes, yes. Uh, Representative Chris Markey is just down the road. He hasn't made it all the way up the hill yet, but I know he's, uh, there he is, he's waving. Uh, uh, and of course, uh, Mark Montigny, our senator, who's been a, a, uh, a big champion of the project all along the way, and Bill Strauss, the chairman of the Transportation Committee, uh, who's a big proponent of, of New Bedford Harbor as well. Bill, uh, 
uh, could not be here today. I, I wanted to thank a number of folks from the city uh, who've worked so hard on this project for such a long period of time. Uh, they include uh, Matt Morrissey, who's been uh, been in the middle of it now, have, having left uh, the EDC, but since his, he was the director of the uh, the EDC, Matt was a real champion of offshore wind before before so many others were. Derek Santos, of course, uh, from the, the current director of the EDC, who's, uh, who really recognizes, uh, and the acting director of the, uh, the Bedford Wind Energy Center, um, uh, and there's so many others to, to thank. Uh, Ron LaBelle from DPI, Ron LaBelle, Zebra Ruta from DPI, uh, Neil Mello from uh, the mayor's office, but my chief of staff, who's uh, played a, a huge role in all of these, uh, in both the, the terminal efforts as well as in uh, the clean energy efforts. Uh, Jeff Steed and Ed Washburn from uh, from the Harvard Development Commission, a uh, huge part in, in all of this. And John Markey from the solicitor's office, who did a fabulous job negotiating a number of the agreements associated with uh, with the terminal, including um, uh, including the the ground lease uh, itself. Uh, great job, all. So, with all that, let me uh, let me welcome up uh, Tony Cabral, who has been, as I said, a real champion of this project right from the start. I will note that the project is not done yet. Project, we are receiving vessels. There's still a few things that need to happen. That big radio tower's got to move. There are a couple of other things, a few other things that need to happen with easements and such. But uh, we've had a uh, we've made tremendous progress to the point where the where the terminal is now operational and contributing to. Economy. Tony. Well, good afternoon. It's certainly a pleasure to be here. This is a great day for New Bedford. It really is. It's a tremendous investment on the part of the state, a tremendous partnership with, with the legislature. It's nice to see, uh, as the chair uh, of the Committee on Bonding, it's nice, it's nice to see a bond authorization finally make its way through and build something. And when it's, when it's in your community, it's even more uh, gratifying. Uh, so it's really nice to see uh, this. I, many people to thank, obviously. Uh, the mayor already thanks some of them, Alicia Barton, Bill White. But I think this started really about five years now, almost six. And started also with the commitment from the state of the, the governor's office in the previous administration that was in that office and the tremendous work and partnership they had with us, with the legislature, with the city of New Bedford, uh, to really commit. There were a lot of naysayers in Boston. There are still some. There are still some naysayers in Boston, but we have overcome most of them, and we'll continue to work to make sure we win all of them over. I think uh, the proof of this vessel today really sets the stage for this terminal to be uh, a very important component of the, of the harbor of the seaport here. Uh, as you know, we are the number one fishing port in the country. This will put us in a different trajectory in terms of other cargo ships and, and, and abilities. Not all, it's not all about offshore wind. Some of it has to do with offshore wind. And onshore, the cargo today is really about onshore wind, which is also a project, as you know, in Plymouth. But all, onshore wind is also an important component of the energy makeup in, in Massachusetts besides uh, the future offshore wind uh, projects that we hope to, to be part of that. So on behalf of, of uh, those that I represent, I'm delighted to be here, the folks who live here in the south end, the west end, downtown, south central, and the list goes on. Uh, it's because of them that I'm able to really stand here with you today and able to fight for the things that are important for all of us here in New Bedford. Uh, and this vessel is just one of many that you're going to see come through. The project is not complete, uh, as the mayor also mentioned. Still a number of things to be done to actually finish the project. The project right now is at one, 113 million and counting. Uh, so just to give you a sense of the kind of investment uh, that the state and the legislature, uh, working with the city and with CEC, the commitment that we made over five years ago to really uh, invest this kind of money in the city of New Bedford. So uh, congratulations to all of those uh, that were involved up to now, and we hope to continue this partnership with you. We have many, many more things to do, and not only related to this project, but other projects in New Bedford that we need to convince, we need to push those, nays those naysayers, to, naysayers to the side uh, and move forward, because I think we can do it. I'm glad that we were able to 
almost complete the project under the previous administration because there were believers in New Bedford. There were believers in Southeast Mass. So I think we have some work to do going forward with this new administration, but I think we're winning them over slowly, uh, and um, but we still have some work uh, to do on, on that end. So uh, in particular for other things that we need related to this particular terminal uh, and to other projects in New Bedford, such as South Coast and others. But the list goes on and the effort goes on, and I want to thank all of you and uh, my other partners in the legislature, Paul and Chris and Senator Montigny, uh, who is not present here, but he sends his wishes, and obviously uh, he was a great champion on the Senate side to make sure that this project and this funding was there as well, because it is a, a two-chamber legislature, so you'll know. I know some folks sometimes forget that. Um, usually on the other direction, uh, <laughs> but it, it, it's really delighted. So thanks to uh, also to the mayor's office, to the mayor, to Tony Sapienza, the workforce development buddy. Thank you, buddy, for all your efforts. Uh, some people would describe it differently, uh, but I would say it's his efforts. Uh, he's tenacious. Uh, and he doesn't let it go, and you know it's because of folks, believe it or not, in the community like Buddy and others, that uh, makes us sharp, and makes us really go up there and do the work that we need to do. Uh, a, th a big thank you to Jeff as well and HDC. Uh, they've been great partners working with us uh, in the legislature and up in the state house to make sure that the projects that are important for New Bedford, such as this one and others, stay on the forefront. So we. we we really appreciate that kind of contact, that kind of work that we have, close relationship with the various groups and the various organizations uh, here in New Bedford. So thank you very much. All right. All right. Thank you, Tony. I'd like to call up Representative Paul Schmidt, who is the, not only one of our reps for the city of New Bedford, but also the uh, chairperson of the Joint uh, Economic Energy and Economic, uh, excuse me, Energy and Environment environmental uh, committee on uh, up at the state house paul thank you very much uh mayor and i gotta, never needs a microphone I, I gotta tell you that it's pretty exciting for a uh, farmer from westport to be part of uh, everything that's going on in new bedford and i want to compliment you uh john for your leadership so i guess uh, as you stand here now and if you look far off at the horizon i think you can see uh the future of the port of new bedford and in fact the city of new bedford and in, in the region, I think you can see how it's going to develop. We see deep water shipping uh, coming here to uh, the harbor. You can imagine how when the rail track comes down uh, to this location, you can imagine intermodal shipping offloading directly onto rail cars or um, onto highways, bypassing the snarls that you find around Boston. And of course, uh, wind energy will be so much will be such an important part of this uh, port. And I do want to uh, recall to all of you uh, how important our South Coast colleague, uh, Speaker Pro Tem uh, Pat Haddad, is uh, to all of this. She is currently uh, shepherding an energy bill uh, through uh, the legislature, uh, which will contain uh, an important uh, position for wind energy. She has the interests of New Bedford firmly in mind, and we want to thank her. Finally, I would like to say uh, that uh, it may appear as though things like this just happen, but uh, they wouldn't be happening to this region uh, if it weren't for the fact that we have two very important, uh, respected, and powerful state representatives here as part of the New Bedford legislature, and it is thanks uh, to Chairman Bill Strauss, Chairman of the Transportation uh, Committee, and uh, thanks to uh, Rep Chairman Tony Cabral, uh, Chairman of the Bonding Committee. That's how things happen, and let's never forget the critical role that they have paid. Thanks very much. All right, All right thank you, Paul. So one of the one of the reasons that this project that went forward was, uh, that, was that uh, New Bedford made a strong case, not only politically, but also on the merits. And in making that case and making cases for other public investment from the state or the federal government, it's key to have the business community involved uh, because they can speak 
uh, with authority on the need for uh, public investment and how public investment ultimately can be uh, generated, translated into uh, both job creation and tax revenue. And, and when it comes to making the case on behalf of the business community, we have uh, the best uh, in the business, and that is our good friend Tony Sapienza, the chairman of the Economic Development Council of New Bedford, and the, uh, the president of Joseph Abood Suits, the, fine, the maker of the finest suits in America right here in New Bedford. Let's have a hand for Joseph Abood Suits, of course. If you like this suit, you know where it goes. All right, and sport coats are selling those too. But Tony, uh, uh, Tony, we really appreciate all the work that you've done to advance this project and so many others, and to make uh, and make the case for New Bedford. I mean, a part of what we do here is, you know, we when we when we when we seek out funding, whether it's from the private sector or the public sector, uh, we we get our ducks in a row. And and uh, one of those big ducks is Tony Sapienza. Tony. Thank you, Mayor. I'll be, I'll be brief. The, the Economic Development Council works with other city and government agencies to bring economic development to New Bedford. We have a group of about 250 members of the council itself. We're governed by a board and we work every single day with the mayor and all of the city agencies to bring these kinds of events to happen. The EDC was, was uh, there to form the Wind Energy Center a number of years ago to support the work that will eventually be done on this, on this terminal site. There's so much going on in this harbor. We work so closely with the Harbor Development Commission and want to see continued growth in this harbor. The fishing port is just the start of the potential that exists. And certainly the mayor's leadership on solar and on wind has been instrumental in providing the kinds of jobs that we know will be the jobs of the future as we build a, a truly uh, energy efficient city and our players on a national level in that in this whole great debate about how to become energy efficient and how to create the kinds of high tech high paid jobs that make sense and to see that ship there is just brings a great feeling of, of, of uh, warmth to my uh, already very warm shoulders and uh, I think very highly of the effort that this community has put together in order to make this happen. So, so thank you, Mayor, for your leadership. Thank you, representatives, for your leadership. Without the state, we could not do this. It's pretty obvious we don't have $113 million sitting in our coffers. But with this kind of effective partnership between the state and the city, uh, we will continue to grow the city of New Bedford. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. Um, and um, you know, one of the big themes today, obviously, is job creation. Um, my uh, primary focus since I became mayor is to figure out how we can grow jobs in the city, how we can set the conditions for private sector job growth. And uh, we've had a good run. Since 2011, the city has grown some 5,000 jobs uh, up and down in various sectors, and especially in manufacturing. And Tony can speak to that directly with the success of Joseph Abood but all across the city, small businesses and large and everyone uh, in between. And we're going to continue to do that. And we do that uh, in concert with the folks who've been at it for a long time. And uh, when you think about jobs in the city and the proponents for job creation, uh, the names that comes immediately to mind is the, our next speaker, and that's Buddy Andrade, who is, uh, who is really devoted his, uh, his career to, uh, to expanding opportunity uh, in every respect for every community within our community. And uh, I know this is a big day for Buddy, who's a huge proponent of this terminal, and I'm just glad you, you're going to have an opportunity to say a few words about it, Buddy. You know, you know we have a lot of solar going up across the city. And Sunday we had an electric car in the parade, at the Cape Verdean Parade, and Independence Day Parade. And that was a fantastic thing to see that car and that parade and, and what it means. And also trying to give the residents of the city a better idea of what we're talking about when we talk about going green. And how important going green is economically and what it can do for the environment, or the planet, and things of that nature. But you know, about, I guess two years ago we were at a restaurant and the mayor signed a 99 year agreement on the short sea shipping um, 
a, a project with uh, Tucson, or I guess I'm saying it right, Tucson, Mexico, where we'll be seeing a lot more of these ships coming in from Mexico bringing fruit and other raw material. The windmills, whether they're onshore or offshore, all come to one major thing that we're talking about, which is jobs. And I want to make it very clear. I've been asked quite a few times today about this thing out of trouble. And no, I have not. I'm still going to be fighting. I'm on a mission here. We're on a mission. The city is doing a hell of a job in trying to get the message across that we need our young people, we need our residents to get engaged in what we're doing and to become uh, uh, green people to understand that the jobs are going to be coming with these ships. And I'm not against the unions. I want to make that very clear. I just want to see union jobs for New Bedford residents. More jobs for New Bedford residents. New Bedford area residents, union jobs, good paying jobs. So we have to start at the high school level, at the vocational level, getting our, our students to understand the types of education and the types of courses they're gonna take around STEM, science and math and engineering, things of that nature. That's the kind of stuff that we need in our schools. That's the kind of stuff that we need to be talking about in our neighborhoods in regards to jobs. And, you know, I wanna quote, Mr. Tom Pina, jobs, jobs, jobs. That's what this is about. And this ship here is historical. This is a historical day for us to see this ship coming in. And I know we have some longshore union men from New Bedford working right now over there getting this ship ready to be unloaded. And that's something that we've all been waiting for, not just Putty, the entire city of New Bedford and New Bedford area. So let's let's get behind the mayor, let's get behind our state legislatures and, and, and push this stuff for the offshore wind so that we can create the jobs and family life that we want to see here in New Bedford for everyone. Thank you. All right, thank you, buddy. Um, yeah, no doubt about it. And, and on the uh, theme of jobs, let me let me recognize Local 385, which is uh, whose members are here in attendance today. Uh, I want to thank the ILA for all of their support in this project. I know a number of their members are here uh, today. We have um, uh, we, we've got great support uh, from both uh, organized labor uh, and others to uh, to to do what Buddy said, and that is to find find ways to get people in good jobs so they can put food on the table for their families and send their kids to college and live the American dream. And that's, that's what it's about. And it's going to happen in the long run if we continue to capitalize on this port. And again, uh, it is sometimes it's really, when it comes to economic development, it, it's about a laser focus on the things you do well, about building on assets. And there have been many champions of the port. Uh, over the years, I mean, people like Bob Unger, the former editor of the State of Times, who's here today, former mayor, Fred Kalitz, uh, another big uh, proponent of the port, our current, one of our current HDC commissioners, Jim Dwyer, so many others here who have been talking about this place. But now we're, we are we're unrelenting in uh, the, our efforts to develop this place because as, in as much as New Bedford's past has been about the port, its future will be about the port. And there is nobody who is better to talk about the potential uh, of the cargo industry in the port than uh, David Wexler from Maritime International, who uh, is, runs the, the uh, city's premier stevedoring company, Maritime International, uh, which is bringing in all those other boats you see, large freighters you see in the middle of the winter, but is also handling uh, the cargo that uh, will be offloaded in the next couple of days from from that vessel, whose name I still can't pronounce. But in any event, this is uh, Dave, David. David recognizes the potential of this port. He recognizes that it can grow and, and offer jobs to folks um, uh, of exactly the type that Buddy was talking about. So I would ask David just to come up and say a few words about this particular project and what's happening in the port. Um, so last week, uh, Neil Mello called me and asked me to speak at this uh, press conference. Uh, so I thought I was going to be the keynote speaker. And uh, I prepared a list of people to thank. <laughs> Fortunately, the mayor has thanked them all for me. Uh, I would stop for a minute uh, and thank the mayor himself and Tony Cabral. Uh, 
so I'm the only guy up here, I think, from the pro. No, I'm not the only guy from the private sector. Here's another guy. Uh, from a private sector point of view, it's just a pleasure to work with John Mitchell and Tony Cabral. When we call them, and it's not very often, they return the call right away, and we finish what we're doing. Two years ago, the mayor called me and said, we're going to send a mission to Europe to look at six ports that are handling the logistics of offshore wind terminals, of offshore wind mills. And um, that was the first time any mayor of the city in the 25 years that I've been here has asked me to go on any international trade mission, so I said yes. And it was a really good mission. A few people here were along, like Bob Gardner was along, and a few other people I see. Um, and that was a very interesting mission because we saw the magnitude of offshore wind uh, term turbines, and we went to factories like Siemens, uh, who's one of the large uh, competitors of Gamisa, who is the company who is bringing these uh, turbines in today. And let me just mention from the private sector, so I don't have to thank all, everybody that was thanked redundantly, I'll tell you a little bit about Gamisa. And Gamisa is one of five large wind turbine companies in the world. They're based in Madrid, although these components were manufactured by some of their facilities in China and came here on a ship that's based in Hong Kong. Uh, Gamisa, this is all online, none of this is confidential. Gamisa is a $3.7 billion company this year, and they, can, and they uh, supply about a third of the wind turbines to Mexico, 22% uh, of the wind turbines to China, and you can imagine the size of that company. They're also in some other product lines. They're in photovoltaic uh, cells, so that if you have an offshore or any wind turbine and it's windy, I mean, it's not windy, but the sun is out, it's generating more energy so that they can do 24 hour a day energy. Um, and they also have marine motors, actuators, and a lot of things that relate to the marine industry. So this company, Gamisa, one of five, is a pretty interesting company for this port to shine in offloading this vessel coming in here. They're very, very important, uh, along with the companies that we saw, Siemens and three others. I mention this because it really relates to what the foresight that the mayor and some of the legislators, such as Tony Cabral, have had in encouraging this investment. My company, which is pretty small compared to Gamisa, has been the only company that's been promoting the port. We spend about a quarter million dollars promoting the port of New Bedford, and guess what? There's no budget for the city of, there's been no budget for promoting international trade up until the, this mayor here. So, um, I'll, just, I'll just say that there are a lot of potentials. We're, we're thankful, I'm gonna go thankful on the, on the guys that are on the ground right now they're over the guys that are beginning to offload the ship. Uh, men from my men and women from my company. We have we've we went ahead and spent the money and made sure we had a facility security officer ready to go. That cost a lot of money, and we've been working with uh, all the government officials. But let me say this: it's it's gratifying after working for more than two years, from my point of view, to finally see a ship come in and uh, and I, I, I just I just have to say it's a, it's been a great team effort and it's encouraged our company to continue and in, to invest in New Bedford thank you very much all right so if I think that's it I want to acknowledge Ed LaCombe Ed you want to say a couple words about the project or not yeah, come on sorry Ed is the president of the International Longshoremen's Association, has been a great partner in the harbor. We just want to welcome Ed to make it here today. Sorry for my tiredness, but I was on the other side over there tying up the ship. It was my turn. 
<laughs> anyway, as luck would have it, my name is Ed Lacombe. I represent the ILA Local 1413, which is the International Longshoremen's Association. We're going to be the ones that are going to be unloading the windmills from the ship. Uh, before I start speaking, I guess I could just words of thanks to a lot of people involved in this project. And going back, this is probably the 13th year that this this terminal has probably been talked about, starting with the Cape Wind project, Mr. Gordon. His uh, tenacity, I guess, his persistence to get this uh, the, this uh, windmill project, the uh, offshore wind terminal, uh, going, being the first one in the country, was uh, gave us the ability to get this dock to the state. Patrick Duvall, big uh, proponent of this. Also, the Clean Energy Department. All together, over the course of 12 years, we were able to get what we have here. I'm in my 41st year of service on the waterfront, started at the age of 18, and uh, to see the progress, to see this happen, is kind of shocking. It's like almost getting a, a heart transplant because <laughs> over the years, over the years in, in the 80s and the 70s, when the cargo was all loose cargo, we were very competitive, had about an 80-man union, hire 60 men to ship, but as years went on and through the uh, invention of the container, uh, everything started moving towards containers. We sort of, we sort of dwindled a lot of that. We held our own over time and went to palletized cargo. We're still doing palletized cargo, but it's pretty much been seasonal since uh, to, uh, probably 2008. So uh, we were hanging in there, and to see this happen is like pretty much a godsend because this waterfront has a, a rich history. I mean, if you talk about the fishing industry, that waterfront goes before the fishing industry. Uh, back, back in the 18th century, I was say 19th century, the whaling industry started. This, putting the Beffin on the map, this waterfront here. Um, if you look at the, you know, the pictures out of the, uh, if you look at the, sp the spinner, you see a lot of pictures. Well, those barrels had to get on the ship somehow to be exported around the world. That was, back in the day, what we call today longshoremen. Uh, famous Civil War abolitionist Frederick Douglass worked on this waterfront. Came from Baltimore, then worked the docks there, came to New Bedford, and again, history, history. Uh, so now, having this terminal, heavy lift equipment, maybe we'll specialize in that. It'll bring us year-round work. We can employ more, more people, and the future, hopefully, will look a lot brighter. Uh, thank you for your patience. I don't have any, uh, I don't prepare a speech. Uh, I don't know what to say, but I'm glad the history continues. Tradition, history, this waterfront, put New Bedford on the map. Thank you very much. Thanks, sir. All right, thank you, everybody.